everyone, this is a video to show my latest corset experiment. So this here is a sport mesh corset and it's very similar to the, um, the waffle iron corset that I had made previously, my skeleton corset, except instead of having open windows in this corset, um, the open spaces have elasticated mesh. It's a power mesh um, used normally for uh, sports garments. So that's why I put corset in quotations because um, depending on who you are, you may not um, define this as a corset because it is elasticated pretty much everywhere except on the waist here. But I'm just going to go through it with you and um, show you all the features. So here is the front, side, the back, and the other side. So here's the corset laying flat. The materials used were a heavyweight power net, which if I just uh, take that apart, you can see that it's quite stretchy. And that's uh, what was used for most of the panels. And then I used black satin couture for the first panels, the center front and the center back panels. I also used the satin couture for the boning channels and this diamond detail and waist tape right there. Um, I bought these at Minikawa. And the power net was more expensive than I'm used to. It's about $15 for just a quarter meter. But fortunately, um, the quarter meter was just enough for this corset as long as I didn't re need to recut anything. So I got lucky there. For co the construction of this, it's essentially six panel pattern, but it ended up being sort of seven panels because of this last strip of coutil at uh, the very back by the grommets. So basically one, two, three, four, five, six, and sort of seven, even though that last one is just uh, basically straight. Um, I did not plan out the construction very well. The corset, um, I had originally drafted it to be designed to sort of dip in at the very center front very slightly just to have a little bit more um, room for the ribs. Um, but having the diamond in the center front there to control the abdominal pooch, um, it meant that I had to adjust the pattern so that the front ended up being very straight. However, it turned out okay in the end. Um, first, the panels of power net were sewn together, wrong sides together, so that they could be flat felled with the bulk being on the outside of the body instead of on the inside of the body. So you can see on the inside here, it is fairly smooth in there and it's quite comfortable against the body even if I'm not wearing a liner underneath. Then what I did was I added the center front um, couture panels with the diamond waist detail basted on the center front seam and this diamond extends into the waist tape right there I hope you can see it um, and this waist tape was basted on each seam of each panel but you can't see that because um, the external boning channels were then uh, you know secured down on top of it and then the back couture panel went on last after that I added the busk and you can see here um, on the inside the couture panel is basically I secured it down with an invisible hem stitch so that it's very neat on the inside and then I added the bones and then uh, basically finished the top and bottom edges. So like I said before this diamond detail is designed to hold in the tummy pooch that sort of oozing flesh problem that I had with my skeleton corset and the diamond extends into the waist tape right there. Um, that ended up being quite a waste of fabric because uh, I had to cut out basically these uh, parts on the side there of that fabric. So in the future, if I make another uh, corset with another diamond detail in the front, I'll probably make the diamond and the waist tape separately and simply attach them in an inconspicuous place like underneath a boning channel. So looking at this diamond detail on the front, even though I had um, drafted the two sides symmetrically, um, I had messed up on the seam allowances, so the diamond ended up looking quite asymmetric when it's closed up like that. Um, it starts a little bit further in on this side and it's a little bit further out on that side. So it's really annoying to me, so I'll probably just wear this corset underneath my clothing. So here's a close-up of the edges. So instead of using binding, I simply trimmed down the top and bottom edges to the correct length, and then I surged the raw edges to keep them from fraying. And this actually allows the mesh to stretch, which is great because it doesn't leave any muffin top, and you don't really see the line of any binding if I wear this underneath clothing. However, it still looks rather unfinished. 
Um, but if I were to add binding, then the top and bottom edges of the corset wouldn't be allowed to stretch like that um, on these panels. So it's not a problem on me right now, but I'm thinking of the future since my weight has a tendency to fluctuate. I want to be able to keep that, um, you know, that stretching feature. So you can see on the inside here that um, this doesn't have a back modesty panel because it's supposed to be a ventilated corset and a person's back has a lot of sweat glands so I wanted to keep that sort of free and open. Also this particular corset is designed to close all the way in the back. It has a closed waist of 23 inches. Um, however I did put a teensy uh, modesty placket on the front there on the knob side of the busk. It's just a quarter inch wide. Now if I were to ha um, have made this bigger, uh, like a wider modesty placket, then the diamond would have been more symmetric, but that would mean that the two halves of the corset would be slightly different widths, and I didn't want that to happen. The busk that I used is pretty short in itself. It's just nine and a half inches long and half an inch wide on each side with five pins. However, the three layers of coutille in the center front um, actually kind of contribute to the sturdiness of it. For the bones, uh, you can see that there are 20 total. Um, so there are 10 on each side. On the side, um, external boning channels here, uh, on each side there are eight quarter inch wide spiral steel bones. And then on the back by the grommets, there is a half inch wide flat steel on the outer edge, and then a quarter inch wide flat steel on the inner edge right there. And just a quick note on these external boning channels. I will put up a tutorial sometime um, on how to make external boning channels. But basically, when it comes to elasticated uh, corselets, girdles, etc., they tend to have fewer panels because the match stretches around curves and they also ha tend to have fewer bones because the use of garters um, at the bottom of the corset it keeps the elastic panels from rolling up when it's stretched while at the same time preventing the stockings from sliding down so it, at that situation the garters are actually performing a, a double purpose however i have no use for garters i'm in pants all the time so i used more bones and boning channels to prevent the mesh from rolling up the grommets that I used are size double zero in this one, and there are 26 of them, 13 on each side. Once again, they're my self-piercing grommets. So far, I've only used these self-piercing grommets on mock-ups and my personal corsets because I'm nervous about putting them in clients' corsets since it does cut the fabric, and also because the lip around them is so small. Like to uh, give you a comparison, this is the type of grommet that I typically use for my clients. You, you can see that it it's a size zero grommet, so the hole itself is bigger, but also the flange around it is bigger. Um, however, I place these grommets closer together. So these ones are about three quarters of an inch apart, and I also make sure that the bones on either side of the grommets are really snug. So these seem to stay in okay. However, I am still nervous about putting these in clients' corsets. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new about mesh corsets. If you did like this video, then please help support the channel by clicking that like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below and I'll be happy to get back to you. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.